thank you very much, Andy. Well, hello and welcome to Hearst Monsu Castle, or should I say in medieval English, hail and well met. We're here in the beautiful walled gardens of Hearst Monsu Castle in East Sussex, where bank holiday preparations are underway for a weekend of jousters, jesters and jokers. It's the medieval festival. Well, the festival's been taking place here since 1992, and it's the largest medieval festival in Britain. Now, uh, reenactors have been coming from all over the country and all over the world to get here. Already hundreds are already here. They'll spend the next three days and nights camped out in authentic medieval tents. We'll be speaking to some who've come as far as Germany in just a moment. But first, it's the largest festival of its kind in the country. Let's take a look at why. Coming to the festival here at Hearst Monsu Castle is a real step back in time to medieval Britain. Thousands come here from all over the world. These reenactors are from Germany. And, uh, tell me how often you come here to the festival? We come here every year and we've been coming since 1996. And what is it about it that makes you want to come every year? Well, first of all, it's the castle and, and the grounds which are wonderful. The garden is just beautiful. And you're dressed as a very smart lady today, aren't you? But Chrissy is dressed as a, a little bit more. Is she the serving Chrissy girl? Chrissy is the maid. Would you like the something maid. to drink? That'd be lovely. Thank you. Um, Here you go. Oh, oh, thank you very much. much. And Chrissy, so uh, you're dressed as the serving girl today? Yes. Yeah, I'm the serving girl, doubling as uh, <laughs> maid to her ladyship. And what kind of duties would you have to do then? Well, it would be um, mainly be in attendance to her, so help her dress, fetch her things. Um, and also because we are traveling, we don't have many servants with us, so I do um, take care of the cooking. Well, I know that the lady dressed such as myself wouldn't normally help out with the cooking, but come and show me the fire. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at that. For three days, everyone here will live and breathe the medieval life. There'll be fierce battles depicting the struggles for power that often took place in the late 15th century. And practicing for battle is an essential part of events course presided over by the lady of the castle but it's not all about battle skills there's plenty of entertainment to keep the hordes happy and no self-respecting medieval household was without a jester to amuse them back at the festival this year is falconry one of the oldest sports in the world practiced by men and women so he must love coming to the festival here then yeah, and he did very well last year. In fact, he's probably one of the best demonstration birds I've got alongside the uh, two falcons. Um, so he's in his environment, definitely. So it's easy to slip into medieval life here at Hearst Monsu. They even provide a dictionary with helpful phrases like prithee attend me, which means please wait on me, one bound to come in handy. And we couldn't help but be reminded of that well-known Shakespeare line. Exit pursued by Bear. Well, I've just about recovered from that excitement. I'm at the top of the hill now, and I'm by the largest replica cannon of its kind in the country. We're not going to fire that one, but we are going to fire this one. Don, tell us a bit more about this gun. Uh, this is a little breech loading piece from about 1470, about in the middle of the Wars of the Roses. It's a castle defence gun primarily against personnel. It makes a nice little loud bang and uh, it's very easy to use. Is it? Easier, Do yes. I need any special skills? No, 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 we've given the earplugs I've and the gloves. I've got the earplugs, which is why um, I'm probably shouting a bit. Gonna, yes, we're going to make sure you're uh, just upwind of it and that'll be fine. Just light the touch hole on the cannon itself and off it goes. Excellent. And can we expect a rather large bang from this? This isn't too bad, but yes, it's louder than most people would think it is. And this would have done quite a lot of damage in the medieval times? Over 30 times. or 40 yards, it would be absolutely lethal, yes. Right, OK, well, earplugs in and gloves on. You, you will have to shout your instructions and Sorry, we'll give Craig. it a go. Primed, so you're touching that match against that little hole with the powder in it. Right. And if you want to shout, have a care just before you do so, that's the traditional warning. Okay. Have a care! Goodness, that was some noise. And if you like loud noises like that, there'll be plenty of guns going off this weekend. And another thing that's happening this weekend, we saw a bit of it earlier on, was the skillet arms competition. Now, if you want to know exactly what skillet arms is, we sent Jeff Moody along to a stables near Burgess Hill to find out more. <laughs> Sarah. 
They call it skill at arms, and that's exactly what it is. A number of exercises involving weapons on horseback. It tests the rider's skills to the max. It's going to improve the quality of your riding because it teaches you balance and coordination and timing. But there's no point in trying to do it until one has reached a, a fairly reasonable high level of proficiency. Unlike jousting, skill at arms doesn't involve contact with another person. It's all about working closely with your horse. John and Joyce Judney run Ditchling Common Stud near Burgess Hill. They train for competitions up and down the country with a series of exercises. First, the tent peg. You bring the horse to a gallop and then you pick up the peg with a spear. It's designed to simulate an attack on a campsite. You gallop past the enemy's tent, pick out the pegs and the tent collapses. And then there's the quintain, a bag of sand on a revolving beam. The aim, to hit the target cleanly and at speed. This teaches accuracy and timing, two of the most important skills. You meet all sorts of different people. Um, you spend weeks or weekends away with your horse. Like all sports, it isn't inexpensive, but I think you get much better value for money out of your horse. For Skill at Arms competitions, points are awarded for each component of the course, depending on its complexity, and the person with the highest points for the course is the competition winner. Jeff Moody in Ditchling for Meridian Tonight. Well, Skill at Arms is just one of the events that's taking place over the weekend. Here to tell us a bit more about what we can expect is Clive, the organiser. Clive, what else is going on? Well, England's Medieval Festival is quite simply the largest and most spectacular celebration of the colourful Middle Ages. We start each morning at 11 o'clock with a uh, grand parade which snakes its way through the castle grounds with over 30 horses and trailing behind drummers and musicians and men at arms. After that, we have the first of our... Uh, battle recreations which uh, which takes place in the front of the castle and it's a siege and it uh, recreates the uh, battles between uh, the houses of York and Lancaster and in the afternoon at three o'clock we have an even bigger battle with hundreds of uh, knights in full armor men-at-arms volleys of archers with full cannon support as the uh, Lancastrians and the Yorkists fight back to take the castle Additionally, we have uh, all sorts of elements around, around the uh, castle grounds. Things for the little ones, we have the Kids' Kingdom in full swing with its Kids' Kingdom stage. We have all the old favourites and new ones like Master Leonardo and Devil Stick Pete, Rusty the Dancing Bear <laughs> and more and more and more. We also have beer and food marquees with whole hogs being roasted on open fires and, and real ale available in all sorts and types. We've got falconry displays, you've seen the skillet arms and uh, and much, much more. Sounds good. And people really get into the spirit of this, don't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. They, we have more than 2,500 participants that come from all over Europe to come here and, and recreate life in the Middle Ages. It's a time capsule. They have uh, living history displays throughout the castle grounds, and we have traders that uh, set up the um, Middle, e Middle Ages uh, traders row, where they do all the authentic crafts and uh, period uh, cooking and all sorts of things from uh, the 15th century. Now, I'm enjoying being the lady of the castle today, but you need to give my crew a few pointers. They haven't worked out this whole looking after the lady, waiting on the lady, have they? That's quite amazing. I think what they really need is they need to come to England's Medieval Festival for a three-day crash course in uh, chivalry. A good idea, a very good idea. Remember that, you guys. Okay, 